Hello guys, David Vos here, and it's another beautiful day out here in paradise, and I hope you're having a wonderful day. This is going to be something you're going to want to hear and share with everybody on the face of the earth. It looks like we may have till May 25th when we are now going to flip into another government controlling our government. All around the world, the World Health Organization will take over the world. They will have all power in finance, medicine, uh, schools, agriculture, you, what you eat, arresting people, everything. They have absolute authority and it will be in effect in every country. This begins on May 25th, unless something happens to derail it beforehand. Remember also the Fed now is, I think, July something or July 20 something, when that goes into effect, whereby they will be able to enforce the WHO rules that they will be putting into effect. So you won't be able to buy or sell. That will come we do not know if it will begin May 25th or July something, but that's when it takes effect technically. Whether they'll in start enforcing it right away, we don't know. It may be till the end of the year, but within weeks probably and months, these things will go into effect. They'll start, it may take time for them to put sensors in all the grocery markets and stuff, but they're already installing them as we saw up in Canada and different places around the United States and around the world. They're installing cameras, face recognition. If they go to the Fed now, it won't take but days, weeks, possibly months. We don't know for them to you know, have complete control. You'll have in order to purchase anything with this digital currency, you will have to get their card or their mark or whatever the thing that they're going to be using. And it could change over time. They might start off with just cards. Uh, maybe they'll use the phone, but. I guarantee, starting very soon, these things are going to begin how quickly they'll be used worldwide in every case, probably within months. So here's what this says. This is Reuters. And it says, how the World Health Organization might face future pandemics. Geneva, by the way, this is the headquarters of the Bavarian aristocrats. Switzerland, Geneva, Bavaria, the Bavarian Illuminati. They run the world. This is BlackRock. This is all the financiers. This is run by some high, very high billionaires such as Elon Musk, Bill Gates, Jeff Bezos, Warren Buffett, and the rest. They own 80% of the World Health Organization. They finance it. And they are the ones who are the most heavily, all of them together, are financing the pharma and it will literally be pharma and you know Pfizer companies it's a German you will comply these are the individuals that will now control everyone worldwide not the United States Constitution now we might see that this will not take complete effect and maybe Trump will get to be president maybe there'll be some pressure upon him to try to pull us out of this. Uh, but I don't personally, after seeing what he did in the first EP, you know, E D I M E I C where he did the warp speed and all the rest. And he's still sticking to it. I don't, you know, he's the one who started the fed. Now his administration, I don't see him pulling out, but anyway, they have, uh, Negotiations on new rules for dealing with the PANDMIC will begin at the World Health Organization on Thursday with a target date of May 2024 for a treaty to be adopted by the United Nations Health Agency's 194 member countries. Okay? That's everybody. A new pact is among more than 200 recommendations 
for shoring up the world's defenses against new pathogens made by various reviewers following the coal in the stove. We're going to go get some coal. Can't say those words. Uh, the 19, the P-A-N-D-M-I-C that has <clears throat> got rid of more than 6.2 M-I-L-L-I-O-N people in two years. I don't believe that little statistics, my friends. This is all made up. This is crazy. Every year, people D-I-E of the flu, of the pneumonia, of the C-A-N-C-E-R, and all the other things. Nothing has C-A-A-N-G-E-D, my friends. But a Washington-led effort to build a global P-A-N-D-M, you know, that thing, Prevention Fund hosted by the World Bank is among initiatives that could determine the future of the 74-year-old body, meaning your future. What is the uh, treaty, the P-A-N-D-E-M-I-C treaty? Well, the WHO already has binding rules known as the International Health Regulations, which set out countries' obligations where public health events have the potential to cross borders. These include advising the WHO immediately of health emergencies and measures on trade and travel. Friends, I don't believe we're going to be allowed to travel unless we get down and worship the beast. Adopted after 2002 and 2023, the SARS thing, that outbreak, these Regulations are still seen as functional for regional EPIDMICs like Ebola, but inadequate for a global PANDMIC. Suggested proposals for the PAC include the sharing of data in genome sequences of emerging yeah, Vs and rules on equitable VAC thingies. Distribution. The European Union is pushing for a ban on wildlife markets and incentives for reporting of new Vs or variants, an EU official told Rudders. Member states have an August deadline to decide on an initial version of this PACT, which is PACT, which is backed by WHO Director General Tedros Ad. Hanom. Now, I'm going to share some information about this guy named Tidros here in a minute. He is a bad guy, and they're giving him complete control of your life. Well, he works for Billy, the gatekeeper. But, anywho, he's likely to be elected unopposed for a second term in May. It would only be a second such health accord. See, this is why these individuals get elected to this they're not elected by us. Okay, we're not electing them. They're not elected officials. They're, the billionaires are putting him in power because he will do whatever Billy the Gatekeeper tells him to do. And they're all in this together. So anyway, um, we could go on with these lies. They're going to probably butter you up to make it sound like this is all right or it's normal or... You know, there's only one choice. We've got to live. We've got to choose life, David. Please give up your freedoms for life. Do it for the children, David. <laughs> Just stand and put your head in the guillotine. Why? You see, it's the only way. Yeah. China did allow WHO-led expert teams to visit. Yeah. Anyway, let me go ahead and cut away to the clip. Watch this, guys, and man, oh man, please, if you've ever written to your senator or your congressman or spoken out on public media, social media, please do it now. I'm going to go ahead and show you that clip now. Welcome the opportunity to debate this topic. I've been calling for this debate for some months, and I thank the 156,000 uh, electors who've uh, voted for us to have this debate today. And the, the pandemic treaty uh, must be viewed uh, in coordination with the changes, the proposed amendments to the international health uh, regulations. Um, as George Santanea said uh, 
that those who fail to learn the lessons of history are doomed to repeat them. And I do have some severe worries that the lessons of the last pandemic have not been learnt by the WHO themselves. And uh, we are in danger of giving them more powers to enable them to overreach themselves and repeat those same catastrophic mistakes again. I would like to start by talking about the WHO itself, as my honourable friend for Don Valley pointed out. It was founded in um, 1948, a specialised agency of the United Nations responsible for international public health. It consists of 192 member states, basically the whole of the UN membership, excluding uh, Liechtenstein and the, the Holy See. And it was based originally on a WH constitution, which is, is, is still today, but this constitution will be fundamentally changed by the two instruments that uh, are in the pipeline following the, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, the WHO is domiciled in Geneva, um, and so it has special status. Its employees are, are exempt from tax, and... Uh, they and their families all have diplomatic uh, immunity. It is indeed a, a supranational body, unelected uh, and, and unaccountable. Um, I think my constituents would, would fear that. Um, how is the WHO set up? Well, it has something called the, the World Health Assembly. Uh, it meets yearly in Geneva. It's a legislative and supreme decision-making body of the WHO. It elects the Secretary General the executive board and votes on, on policy and, uh, and, um, of, of the uh, WHO. And uh, the current uh, chairperson of the World Health Assembly of the WHO is a gentleman by the name of Harsh Vardhan. In, in 2021, uh, Mr. Sharma, the Indian Medical Association, the Indian version of the, uh, the BMJ, the largest association of doctors in India, issued a statement when he objected to, to Vardhan who was uh, endorsing uh, uh, Coronil, a, a product uh, that, that was being made in India. The, the IMA, the Indian Medical Association, questioned the ethics of a health minister, Mr. Vardhan, the health minister at the time, of that country, to release uh, a, a fabricated and unscientific product onto the people of India. He's since gone on to become chairperson of the WHA, who are going to be presiding over this, this new treaty that's going to be uh, uh, sitting before every government in the world. Uh, given that he resigned from the cabinet in India over this controversy, why has he ever been trusted with greater responsibility? It seems he's failed upwards, like many at the WHO and the w WHA. So, the original ideals of the WHO were, were, were completely laudable. The WHO is to, to serve the health of the people. It's uh, governed by its, its member states, that, who will implement health policy in the interest of our people. Um, state sovereignty and the rule of law will be respected. That's under Article 3 of the International Health Regulations, before they're amended. People's self-determination will be fully respected. All human rights, conventions and other uh, acts will be respected that countries have joined up to. That was protected under, under Article 54 of the original uh, um, human, uh, regulations of human rights. But who's now funding the WHO? Like many of our, our regulators in the UK, the MHRA, 86% funded by industry sources. The Joint Committee on Vaccination and Immunisation and their personal declarations, they declared over a billion pounds of interest in Big Pharma, the, the, the thing they were set out to regulate. This undermines public confidence. Well, the WHO now is no longer anything like majority funded by its member states the people who it is seeking to control. It's 86% funded by external sources. Um, I, I'm not sure that um, my, my honourable friend uh, for Winchester is, is, is correct. Uh, the UK is not the, th the third largest donor. Uh, the uh, the th second largest donor is the third largest donor. The second largest donor after Germany is the Bill and Melinda Gates uh, 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 Foundation. And I think Gavi is the fifth. So we have those together. That is, they are the biggest donors to the, the WHO. And you have to think, why, why are they doing this? They're also the, the biggest donors or biggest investors in, uh, in, in pharmaceuticals and the, uh, the experimental MRA technology, which, which proved so prof profitable for those who uh, proposed it and produced it during the, during the last pandemic. 
Indeed, the WHO, it says the member states' contributions to WHO funds have been capped and today account for only 16% of WHO's total budget. With an increasing share of funding to WHO coming from voluntary contributions, where donors direct funding according to their priorities. Well, their priorities might not well be the priorities of my constituents in North West Estershire or the, or the electorate in the UK, but he who pays uh, the piper call, calls the tune. The WHO are, are promoting the influence of private-public partnerships. They, they, they promote that on, on their websites to the point where it's pay-to-play. Anyone can buy uh, influence at the WHO. It's just going to cost, cost you money. And when it comes to when they're, when they're consulting, their own internal report, um, their survey evaluation, final report, May 23, uh, 23rd of May 2022, the various interest groups have more input to the WHO policy than the member states. It said under the WHO's own figures that the member states' only participation was 40% of the input, whereas 60% came from non-member states and 276 stakeholders. So, so it's clear there's a strong external influence on the policy of the WHO. An entity which, if the, uh, the amendments to the international health regulations and the pandemic treaty were to be passed, and doing nothing is not an option, if this House does nothing and does not vote, they will come to pass uh, by May 24. So doing nothing is, is not an option, it isn't going to go away. Um, so the WHO's intermediate study says the WHO is an international organisation, created as a sub-agency of the United Nations, for the obje objective of obtaining the highest possible level of health for all people. But at what cost? At what cost? What cost democracy? W what cost to, uh, to uh, individual freedoms? It is now 80% funded by non-member states and it is heavily influenced. And it also, during the pandemic, it took extra powers called um, the fact that it could define information. It took on a position, and this, is, this will be enacted in law and binding in those two new instruments that the WHO has the ability to say what is disinformation. And when anybody says to you that the science is settled on any issue, I suggest that this House would, would, would smell a rat straight away because science is never settled. There is always open for modification, for new, new things to be discovered, theses to be refined. And what the, what the WHO is saying is that the WHO will be the arbiter of what the science is, and that cannot be right. It's a bit like someone saying the market's changed. Well, in my experience, it, it, it never has. So that is a huge, a huge grab of power. And the, the two instruments, the, uh, the, the pandemic treaty and the, the amendments to the international health regulations, are progressing in, in parallel. And the, for those who, I, I just really worry whether colleagues in this have actually read the, read the, read the treaty, because clearly, you know, when you take out the words not binding as an amendment, it then becomes binding. You know, these, these are binding treaties. If we do nothing, these treaties are binding. They're legally binding uh, across, all, across all the nations. They're bringing in a, a, an idea called One Health. So, and this then extends the ability of the, uh, the Director General of the WHO to call uh, um, a public health emergency of international concern, which incidentally is, is abbreviated to FAKE. FAKE, a, a FAKE. So... Uh, and it, it says that he can bring it in on the suspicion, the risk of an international uh, incident. It doesn't even have to be about a, a, a pathogen that's affecting humans. It, c it can affect animals. It's taking the powers because it could be because of the environment or an increase in the levels of CO2. I suggest that honourable and right honourable members read the treaty. It's, it's just a massive extension of powers. And at, at the drop of a hat... One man, Mr. Tedros, can call a, a, uh, for, for massive powers to the WHO. And not only will he call when, when he takes the powers, he will decide when the pandemic or the emergency is over. And when he'll possibly give us the powers back to this house, where elected representatives are supposed to be representing the interests of, of our constituents. Well, that will all, all be suspended. And, and I would... While we're talking about Mr. Tedros, I mean, I would just remind the House that this gentleman who will be deciding the fate of the world, uh, it will be within his gift to...
call this, uh, these emergencies. Um, his, his, the conduct of the WHO in the recent uh, um, Ebola uh, outbreak in uh, the Direct Democratic Republic of Congo, where, where 80, 83 individuals who are working for the WHO sexually abused uh, local women, and including the sexual assault of a 13-year-old girl. And, and it, was, it was all covered up, uh, Mr Sharma. And, 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 and in a leaked document from the WHO, which would have been in front of Mr. Tedros's committee, a confidential UN, UN report submitted to the WHO last month concluded that the manager's handling of the case didn't violate WHO sexual exploitation policies because the woman concerned was not a beneficiary of WHO aid since she didn't receive any humanitarian support. That is completely unacceptable. If that's the, the rules of an organisation, we'll be deciding whether my constituents are locked down for six months, three months, and whether they can go and see their granny. I, I don't think it's acceptable. Also, this, these new treaties, they compress the time for governments of mandatory reporting lines of 72 hours from when a possible, a risk uh, to public health has to be uh, reported to the WHO, and he'll make a decision. This is far too little time for any research, any meaningful research to be done as to what the real risk is. And it will lead to lots of potential for false alarms and unnecessary disruption. These are huge powers that these two instruments would seek to take away from this parliament and every other parliament uh, around the world. And they need to be considered very, very strongly. Sticking your head in the sand isn't going to do. It won't do for my constituents. You know, if we learn anything from the, the vote we had in 2016 is that people in this country, they do not want to be ruled by unelected, unaccountable uh, bureaucrats. And there's no one more unaccountable and unelected of people in the WHO who don't pay tax and they and their families have uh, immunity from prosecution because they've got diplomatic immunity. They're also under the huge financial interests of whoever wishes to, wishes to fund them. So many experts are, are now saying that... Uh, these two instruments would fundamentally reset the relation between citizens and sovereign states, not in this country, but also around the whole, the whole world. Unelected, unaccountable, top-down, supranational body, the WHO. Uh, what these treaties will do will, will empower that, uh, that um, Director General to impose sweeping, legally binding, they are legally binding directions on member states. They'll be forced, they have the power then to force companies in this country, or any other country, to manufacture certain um, medical uh, treatments and to export them to other countries and be told to do it. You'll have the power to shut down any business in this country re regardless of, uh, of, of what the local people think or even this, this parliament. It, it takes away all the protections that, that uh, being in a democracy offers. It actually takes away Article 3. In, in the original constitution, which is, is the respect of human right and dignity. That goes and is replaced by a bland statement saying that there will be equity. And, it, and equity means whatever it means. It means that everyone's going to be treated equally. It also means that one solution to any international problem around the world. And that leads to an all or nothing situation, Mr Sharma, where... If the WHO got it right, and if we want to go in, if I have the time, I'll go into everything they got wrong in the last pandemic. If they get it right, okay, maybe okay. But if they get it wrong, that's the whole of humanity has got it wrong. There's no competition. And if, if there was only one car manufacturer, only one solution, I'm not sure it would be the best car that we could ever have. I think competition between nations for solutions is a good thing. Um, I, have, I have grave concerns over, over these two instruments. <sighs> And we have grave concerns. I have grave concerns to consider who's actually running and controlling uh, uh, um, um, the WHO organisation. It'd be foolish not to see that the big pharmaceutical giants with their lobbying power, they have huge influence over the direction of the WHO. And like many multinational corporations, uh, their size and scale supersedes even national governments. With over 8% of the, the WHO tree uh, budget now uh, specified funding, and they have the ability to direct policy. Um, I think it's fair to say we're, we're drifting away from the WHO's original noble ethos of promoting democratic, holistic approach, cooperation uh, to public health. The WHO let us down over COVID with their response. In January 2020, it's already been pointed out, they were still telling us that there, there wasn't person-to-person -person, uh, transmission of the virus. That was wrong. That was wrong. 
And then they prescribed lockdowns and mass vaccination during a pandemic, which, which, which drove mutations. The pandemic response by the WHO and the national governments should be a cautionary tale on the impact on citizens of handing power uh, to the state and should be certainly not be a template for going further and faster in terms of signing away rights and liberties. Indeed, the pandemic response was so brutally illustrated the profit-optimised version of the greater good pursued by the WHO often clashes with children's health. Before I spoke out on the 13th of uh, December uh, with regard to the risks of the, uh, the uh, experimental uh, mRNA vaccines, the MHRA were looking to authorise the, the vaccination of, of children down to the age of six months in this country. I'm, I'm very grateful that the government listened and they, we didn't do that. Indeed, it was then pushed back to people uh, over 50 and uh, after my speech on the 17th of March, I'm delighted that the government now has put it back to only those over, over 75. That's, that's, in a few months, that's a huge uh, difference from uh, we're going to vaccinate everybody. Uh, and I think that, uh, that tells the, the tale of if we were all under one rule, we'd be doing exactly the opposite of what this country has individually decided to do. Um, so while we're on the, uh, the subject of opaque, undemocratic organisations, it's uh, interesting to see that what the EU are doing. Well, the EU are actually going to, they think that we need to strengthen all this, and they're going to set up, not only with the, uh, will the uh, WHO be allowed to have a department of misinformation, they'll be the arbiters of whatever the truth is during an emergency, the, the EU are going to take over exactly the same, the same um, policy, and, and they're going to have their own as well. So when we, when we have a, uh, a pandemic situation, there will be only one version of the truth. Well, that's not very good for science, is it? Um, the One Health approach, it's also a whole society approach. They will, they will have the ability to motivate, uh, to mobilise every aspect of our society. Once they call those emergencies, they're going to be able to keep them going. They have control of absolutely every aspect of our, our citizens' life. This is absolutely massive. There's no more important treaty. Of course, if we were to give these sort of powers, which I would never vote for myself, um, of course we should have uh, a, a referendum, because sovereignty belongs to the people. It's not ours to give away, and we know that from the referendum we had in 2016. I hope the House listens very carefully and reads these documents. Well, guys, there you go. Uh, I hope you listen carefully. Um, paid attention to what he was really saying. I'll just leave it to speak for itself. And I'll just say this before we go, guys. If you don't know Jesus Christ, go find a testimony. Go make sure. Because if you're just going to look at this logically, what Jesus said would happen in Matthew 24 and Luke 21 is happening right now. And one of his apostles, the Apostle John, wrote in the book of Revelation everything that's occurring right now. Whether you believe in Jesus or the devil, that the devil exists or not, some kind of evil is coming. The Bible calls it the wrath, the wrath of Yahweh because Nobody wants to, because they've lured us. He's deceived the whole world, the devil. He's come down knowing he has a short time. And this has been predicted a long time ago. By the way, it's written in the stars. And every nation on the face of the earth, they were expecting Jesus. And that's why the wise men, the three wise men from all the different countries, from India and Persia and, and, um, and Syria, they came. And they bowed down before Jesus and they took off their crown. And they said, this is the promised one. And Jesus came and did something. He gave us an opportunity to believe in love. He gave us a new covenant. And everybody who wants to. See, there are powers above this world that our Heavenly Father loves us. And he's not going to just take away your free will. He's offering it to you. You have to choose. So, it's up to us whether we want to receive the love of the truth that we might be saved. And the Bible says to be saved means to be saved or delivered from the wrath that's coming. If you are not delivered from this wrath, it is because you didn't receive the love of the truth. 
to love one another, to help one another, to care for one another, to, to give people forgiveness and freedom, to be a human being, to follow after love and mercy and willingness and his grace, not to be under the law, which brings judgment. If you don't receive the grace, if you don't say, I'll try to love and I'm going to pursue happiness and the Holy Spirit, then you're under this world and the deity of this world is the devil. And he's the accuser and he accuses the brethren day and night before my father's throne. And if he accuses you, the only way you can get around that accusation to say that you have eternal life and that you're worthy of it is to say that I love others. You see, because whatsoever you judge, you shall be judged. And Jesus said, if you'll confess my name among men, I'll confess your name to my father in heaven. Jesus is coming. This is the judgment. The hour of his judgment has come. The third angel's message in the book of Revelation. Fear the Lord and give him glory. For the hour of his judgment has come. Friends, if you're not sure, get your Bible and start reading and prayerfully ask the Lord to give you a testimony and receive his love and grace and go and tell your neighbors and tell them all the good news. Friends, we don't got a lot of time left. Understand, all you must do is believe and you shall be saved. I love you. And all of the Lord's children love you. And we all are rooting for everyone. We want everybody to choose life. But you see, if you insist upon this N-A-Z-I, evil, wicked, satanic government that's going to take over, where no one has any freedom and it's all control and it's, you know, accusations and hate and turning your brother in to the guillotine and Beating your fellow servants as Jesus so eloquently explained what would happen. If you do that, if you choose to not forgive, but to accuse and to be a hypocrite and to hate your brother and demand and say, oh, they're not worthy of living. We got to make rules and we've got to get rid of the B-O-P-U-L-A-T-I-O-N of the world because... Mother Nature is so important. She's dying because... No, Mother Nature is, is is not very healthy right now. But that's not because of us, the people. It's because of these evil, wicked men possessed of this evil, wicked doctrine, this great deception... And the things that they're doing with this one world government and this currency and all the things that's going on that is being set up to destroy human beings because the devil is jealous. He hates you because he knows that when Jesus arrives, he's going to take the devil and the dragon and the false prophet. These are symbols of the governments and the religions of today. He's going to take them and throw them into the symbolic area of hell. The lowest pit. He's got a key. He's going to lock it. And they're not going to come out. We're not going to bring them to mind anymore. There's not going to be any more pain or any more death. For the former things have passed away. The Lord loves you and he wants you to simply say yes. It doesn't mean that you're going to be perfect. It doesn't mean you do, that, that you don't make mistakes. Everybody, the Apostle Paul was consenting to the death of Christians. Until Jesus met him on the road to Damascus and he was converted to the Christ. And he says, I am what I am by the grace of the Lord. And because of what the Lord did for me, I want you to know, Paul says, the apostle Paul, that everyone who receives Jesus, he loves everyone. He's not willing that any should perish. All you got to do is choose life. But if you are hateful and mean and you accuse your brothers and hate and begin to beat and fellow, you beat your fellow servants and try to, you want to be, get a big seat in this new one world government where everybody's wiped off the face of the earth except the elite and you, because you believe their lie, well, you'll get what you chose because you didn't love. You cannot be loved. Not right now until you go and learn a lesson. You know, because human beings cannot 
wicked, immoral human beings are not going to be allowed to continue doing their wicked, immoral things in the coming kingdom of the Lord. And so the Lord's going to have to take individuals that refuse to love and forgive and be happy and receive the grace of the Lord. He's going to have to take them and put them in a little area where, you know, a part of Hades where they can come back out at the end of the thousand years because the rest of the dead does not come to life until the thousand years have ended. And then there'll be another judgment and they'll have another chance to make a decision. But you see, perhaps there'll be some reforming going on and some and some teachings and, and, and you know, over time, everybody, the Lord's not willing that any should perish. But friends, if you want to go and be with the Lord and see your family and be happy, the Lord's coming back soon. It, it warms your heart to know that we're almost there. This is going to be a great tribulation. But Jesus said, if you follow him and you endure unto the end, you will be saved. That means delivered from the wrath to come. In the book of Revelation, it says, he'll keep you from the hour of test. The 10 days of trial coming upon the entire world, it will not come upon you. We're not appointed under the wrath. Those who believe in the Lord, because we passed over from death to life, we received his grace. We're no longer under any condemnation as Christians. So I'm going to go ahead and go. And please share this video, warn everybody what's going on, tell them about the love of Christ, feed the hungry, clothe the naked, cast out the devils, and tell them the good news. This is David Vos. Hope you have a wonderful evening. We'll see you tomorrow. May the Lord bless you.